From the northern plains of South Australia, a spine of broken red rock, the Flinders Range, makes a southward line to the edge of land, the waters of Spencer's Gulf. And here, unexpectedly, the iron ore wharf marks Whyalla, noisy with the clash and rattle of shipbuilding on the west of the Gulf. On the east of the Gulf, Port Pirie has its smelting works, producing lead, zinc and sulfuric acid, and its pleasant old-fashioned town. At the head of the Gulf, against the distant background of the Flinders Range, stands Port Augusta, a rail town centre for lines stretching hundreds of miles to the north and west, and now a centre for power. The powerhouse will eventually supply a network covering all of South Australia. And for fuel, it depends on coal, from the great open cuts of Lee Creek at the northern end of the Flinders Range. Lee Creek is on the plain beyond the range, and man seems to have built mountains for himself. The heaps of overburden, taken to lay bare the seams of coal beneath. But the red rocks are never far away in the Flinders country, rearing from the valleys that in springtime are dappled with cloud shadow across the colour of grass and flowers. North to south through the range, the line of the rail twists and turns, fighting its way under the jagged ridges and past the jutting spurs, dodging when it can, fighting when it has to, carrying cattle and sheep, stores and supplies, and coal. Spring in the Flinders country means water and growth on the hillsides, streams flowing wide and shallow over the stony creek beds. Now, water means more, where the jagged walls of the Flinders Range have been joined to the smooth white concrete of the wall of the Aruna Dam. Here is a sure source of supply for the people working and living at Lee Creek. Southward, the train finds a track across the plains. But the range is always in sight, a permanent background to the busy locomotives and loaded trucks which startle the kangaroos across the red plains of wild hops. Send the Euros bounding through the shadow-scarred hills and frighten the white cockatoos. Even the galahs scream indignantly into the air. Everyone is frightened. Almost everyone. The old narrow gauge line is so busy now that a new standard gauge line is building. Across the plains, machines are making the way for the advancing rails. And pylons stand in line across the wide watercourses, serving a land too often called the dead heart of Australia. It is urgent work. Every foot of track is valuable. Even though the standard gauge track is not complete, it's already in use. And at the changeover point, the narrow gauge train goes pickerback. A line of trucks with flat tops is backed up on the standard gauge tracks. The narrow gauge train is shunted in and pushed up onto lines fixed to the flat tops. The standard gauge train starts up and away goes the whole concern. One train on top of the other. Narrow gauge trucks traveling over standard tracks. It is a lonely country, but you find friendly homesteads here and there. In the spring, the red soil is covered. Some slopes with green native grasses, 
others with the purple haze of the flower, sometimes called Patterson's Curse, because it infests wheat crops. But in the Flinders country called Salvation Jane, because it makes good feed for stock. You'd never call it crowded country, but it's surprising how often you meet the odd man, a cattleman perhaps, driving stock to the auction yards or railhead. Farther down on the plains, the linesmen are busy on the north-south telegraph from Darwin to Adelaide. The mailman drives his truck across the creeks, wide and raging in the wet, a bed of stones in the dry. But in spring, a babble of water with flowers blossoming on the banks and the fields beyond. This is the time of year when tourists come by car and caravan from the south. All year round, the drovers are moving their sheep. You could call theirs a hard life, but they like it. It's man's work and it brings man's pay with the money you can get for your sheep at auction in the towns of the Flinders Range, towns like Quorn and Hawker, where the auctioneer talks loud and fast and everyone else uses a slow voice that disguises quick thinking when it comes to the odd shilling or two in the price. Everyone goes to the auctions, leaving the wide main streets to the dogs. All the Flinders country is something like this. You never see much activity, but it is rich and valuable land. This is the Flinders range, hard country, lovely country. colors of the fantastic picture of spring that is painted in the mountains that run their twisted course across the plains of South Australia. The Flinders Rain.